Okay, let's start right here. I'll show that it reached freezing last night. Over here, I have my test for the cement. I overheated this edge here. You can see it's like little crystals that formed because I overheated it here. I'll overheat it some more. See that? I will also overheated the stuff. The stuff I diluted doesn't do that. Just this stuff. All right. This still feels tacky right here. That's the, it's been like two days. Let's give it a test. Not a clue. It's sizzling though. It's supposed to beat up if it worked. I guess this isn't the stuff or it's just horribly wrong. Oh, now I know. It's gonna snow tonight, so that's as far as the testing on that's gonna go. Hold on, I shut the camera off too soon. Just started realizing it did repel right here and over here. It it's repelling it. Maybe I just splashed too much on there at once to see it roll off in a bead. But it does seem to have maybe if I coated it some more with the diluted stuff. But it clearly, clearly did dry quicker. Like it didn't the water didn't soak in where I did the test. Hmm. Huh. All right, well, I don't have much more time on this because it's going to snow tonight. All right, one last time. It's only been a couple minutes. The stuff I did heat up actually repelled it amazingly. The stuff I did not heat kind of looks like it dried, but so is all the area surrounding it. I mean, it's only a little bit drier than normal. This stuff, I can't even tell because it was dark to begin with. But it did definitely repel the stuff I heated, but... It did freeze last night, so it's been really cold. So heating this stuff, I don't know if it can wash away. Time will tell. But I'd be interested. I might seal my whole walkway here if that actually repelled like that. Alright, that's enough of that subject. Fail to learn here. And I spent a lot of time, what, three episodes already, covering the subject. Uh, and I still haven't got definitive answers yet. So I'm probably going to do some more content. Well, not even content. I'm not going to record. I'm just going to do more testing myself behind the scene. And a lot of YouTubers basically say they don't use gloves because they're not a wuss. And I feel the same way, but I do have burns here from playing with this stuff. I was being very careless with it. I have burns all over my hands. So from now on I will be wearing gloves. I'm gonna go buy some now. I have construction gloves but I've already found out it will go through shirts so it'll go through those kind of gloves I have. I'll get more uh, latex and rubber gloves because I do not want to burn myself like that again. That's just carelessness it could have been worse this is a small price to pay to learn don't listen completely to other youtubers uh, let's get started on some of the uh, test results here Oops. the putty the I don't know if it's even gypsum here I'll sh show the stuff this stuff here is what these balls are. This is a normal water mix. And this is with the silicone silicate. If I'm even saying that right. I'm pro there's a chance I'm water glass. I like this stuff a lot. Very different consistency than what I've been used to. I'm going to test them out today with fire. I also have the fitting here two brass parts together very sticky still I, c I can't pull them apart anymore since I, I heated it a couple of times already so it's definitely a glue the bottom half to the wood is still 
wet and never glued to that. So I'm gonna try heating that again. Maybe I'll get it to stick to the wood. So I'm gonna heat the balls. I have my cups here. They look like in different products. This one's darker with the water glass than that one. I gotta keep the content shorter here. This stuff with the perlite never dried. It's still a clay. Never ever dried. I'm gonna have to heat cure it to dry that stuff. All right, let's get to the heating part. This stuff, still very clay-like. This is what I want to build the foundry out of. It developed a smoother gloss surface on the cover. It's definitely uh, stiffer than it was, but it's just a surface thing. It's not all the way through. I can feel like a skin on it. And the rest of it's very rubbery still. But it's definitely hardening, but I'm gonna finish hardening it today with this. I'll just do a corner. I'm gonna probably fast forward through all of this. Everything is gonna take time to heat up. I already knew that stuff was fireproof. You use this on the job site all the time. Like when you do a garage, you have to finish taping it to meet fire codes. So I already knew this stuff was going to be fire resistant on its own. Then move to this stuff. Instant pocketing. This stuff did not do that. heat all right well the only thing i didn't test was portland cement i should go buy some i was learning that per portland mix might help all right i've been at this for a half an hour now i've been going through a cycle of heating i've heated this a couple times i've heated this one probably i favored heating this one a lot more i've heated that it has a tarnish on it and it's starting to crack in places already this is without the water glass this is normal i've spent a lot of time heating and laying it cool and heating it again the and i've heated that up i should mention that this was stuck to the wood when i first started that's why it's still on the wood all right the stuff that i was burning this is the one with the water glass in it I decided I was going to crack it open. The surface looks fine. Uh, and I'm gonna use this one as a comparison. This one also was fine. I heated both of them up very well, very adequately. They turned them completely solid red. And they both came back to a state that has my confidence going. I'm just familiar with this stuff. So I obviously wanna gravitate towards it because it's what I work around all the time. I don't work with cements. I'm not familiar with cements, but I am familiar with the compound. And I'm gonna break this stuff in half. I don't know if I can. Didn't take much. Hmm. Looks like those vanilla wafers. That's how it looks. There's no real cracks. There is pockets in there though. I'm not sure where the pockets came from. This stuff without it is a little harder to break, but it might be because that was thinner. Not really. Okay, starting to get it crumbling. 
the wood is destroyed except for where right where that piece was put on it, left on it, so that I know the heat doesn't transfer through it. And the majority of the heat was placed onto this piece. It was uh, hard to pull off. In fact, I'm still having trouble getting this piece off. Remember, I started heating it today. I heated it. Oh, it wasn't too bad. It came right off. Just needed a little prying from underneath. Now I'm going to try to separate the two pieces. It looks uh, very trashy. The stuff that's exposed turns white and flakes up quite a bit. Like this is that crust right here. Still tacky. Okay, I'm gonna start prying it. Came apart easily. I took a look for myself here. That white stuff is all under here. I don't know if it's because it wasn't carbonated or the CO2 has to get to the stuff to cure it. But I tried heating it. And I don't know if you heat it before it cures, if it flakes into this white stuff. But that could be a problem. I'm going to try scraping it free. Comes right off. Comes off easily. I scraped a little right here. Very easy to come off. Now I don't need this stuff to be strong. It's not structural by any means. But all the research I could find is people going, it's YouTube. YouTube is my source of information and it's a really bad place to get information. I just want a straight up answer. Can't find it anywhere. There's a pizza ovens that use vermiculite. I might go with that. Though I hate vermiculite. I don't think it's healthy. Which is weird that they're using it for pizza ovens. I'm going to look at vermiculite. I'm pretty sure vermiculite is really unhealthy for people. Yet yeah, it's being used in pizza ovens. It's kind of curious. Got my curiosity going. Because I, I work with vermiculite insulation all the time. It's not something you want to breathe in or digest. Why is it for pizza ovens? Now I'm ranting. Let me go look at it. Alright, I managed to find some answers. The vermiculite is not a, itself bad. But the main mine that it used to come from had cancerous... Uh, what is it called? Tremolite? Whatever. It's an asbestos, a very fine asbestos that got mined with the vermiculite. And that's the stuff that's in the attics of most homes today. So that's why when I work in the field, I go, I got to stay away from that. But it seems to be okay for pizza ovens, I guess. From the newer mines. And I stand corrected about the... Um, I've never seen anyone use the compound because I found... I think technically using... Plaster of Paris counts as a compound. They're almost the same, gypsum and that. Alright, I went to go get gloves. I don't know if they are good for anything, but they're definitely thick. Anyone that plays with this stuff, water glass, and doesn't wear gloves, probably doesn't know what they're doing. And they're probably repeating stuff they've seen. Definitely wear gloves. Don't just say, oh, only wussies wear gloves. I got eye protection too. I do have eye protection, but this is supposed to be a splash. Uh, it's, you know, 
has a guard on it and I can wear it over my glasses. I'm going to make some more of this stuff for further testing. I went bought the play sand, Portland cement. All right, perfect voice over time. Ironically, I started this all trying to be cheap. It's gonna be more expensive in the long run. I gotta run a whole bunch more tests. I don't have results yet, but luckily I don't have a group or following yet, so I got time to just maybe a month or so of fiddling. But I heard you go dead on YouTube if you don't have content every week, so I'm probably gonna have some fillers. Just a warning.